Good morning. Coming to you live from Bismarck today. Uh, tomorrow morning, definitely going to be early. Pride of Dakota show starts at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, so it'll be on somewhere between 7 and 8 o'clock, I would guess. Today we look at Ezekiel 42 through 44. And uh, just uh, before I talk, I mean, too much about that. Uh, the first 32 chapters of Ezekiel, uh, it, we're talking about the judgment of God against the Israelites, you know, his own chosen people, plus the other nations, especially seven nations that really were warring against Israel, including Assyria, Edom, Babylon, Egypt, and you know, and, and that. Um, and then from, you know, 33 through 40, um, 33 through 36 especially, where we're talking about some of the judgments against these other countries more explicitly and and uh, and how you know these countries that thought they were you know all powerful and almighty would be delivered into the hands of Babylon who you know who you know the, the nation that you know God really didn't like at all and and then verse 30 chapter 37 you know we start to see again the power of God to reconstruct his people especially with the valley of dry bones and and the gathering, you know, the images of gathering people back together again. And then starting in chapter 40, we had, you know, Ezekiel's vision of the, the rebuilding, the restructuring. And and so, and this was especially um, powerful for the people because they had, they had been living for the many years in exile, you know, dispersed, spread around through the countries, and Jerusalem and the temple were still there. So there was still hope. There was still hope in that. But when the temple, especially when the temple was destroyed, you know, the the hope of getting back together again, you know, their their home point was gone. And, you know, it's just, you know, for for many, many of us, you know, we can think about, you know, our home, the where we grew up, maybe is no more. Or, you know, our, our hometowns are shrinking and, and not so much left there. And, you know, we don't have, you know, some of our roots. And that would have been the, you know, the temple. And and so when the temple was destroyed, I, I think that it was, it was one of those reminders. It, I shouldn't say was, it is a reminder for us that, you know, God is much more, focused on people than he is on places people are more important to god than places and this is and this is what you know god's commitment is to the people you know and it's like he told his chosen of israel i will take you by my hand i will lead you into the promised land and i will you know drive out the other nations before you and i will send my son you know jesus and you know so it's to the people that God has his commitment, not to the places, not to the buildings, not to the altars, not to the paintings on the walls or the fancy stained glass windows or anything like that. So um, we we kind of tend to forget that. And, and, and we're like the disciples talking with Jesus sometimes as they were looking at the temple in Jerusalem. And this temple was still being built. And they were in awe of the the majesty of the temple and the size of the stones and and Jesus said, you know, it won't be long and this t total temple will be destroyed again. And it was and within, you know, another 40, 45, 50 years after Jesus died. You know, that that magnificent temple was again totally destroyed, reminding us again that God's commitment is to the people, not to the place, not to the building, not to not to the things, but to you and to me, to God's chosen people. And so when we start seeing Ezekiel's vision here, this very explicit vision you know, of the temple, and uh, you know, yesterday I mentioned that it was the, the big cubit that they were measuring with, not the regular cubit, but you know, the big cubit, and, and, and measuring out all of the walls and everything. And in today's, in chapter 42, it really talks about the, the, the buildings that are going to be the, the homes for the priests, and these two buildings, one on the north and one on the south, are 187 feet, 185 feet by 87 and a half feet. So, 
you know, half as wide as they are long and three stories high. And the second story and the third story being not quite as big as the first story because of their construction and everything at that time. But you think about two buildings that are, you know, 185 feet by 87 and a half feet. I mean, we got machine shed on the shop, on the farm that's 100 by 50. And, and so that's, you know, not, you know, it's, it's a little over half as long and half as wide, but you, you take two buildings like that, three stories high. There are a lot of people can stay there. And I think about this hotel we're staying in, you know, that's, you know, compared to that size of 185 by 87, you know, there's, there's a lot of people can stay here. And so for the priests, for those two, two huge buildings that way, for the priests, and, and the priest's duty is to serve the temple. I mean, most of our communities now, I mean, our smaller communities especially, you know, we've got a, we might have a parsonage for the pastor and family to live in, uh, but but none of us have a, you know, a, a, a huge apartment complex that houses all of our pastors. I mean, you know, uh, so there were there were a lot of priests that, that were serving God and serving the people, and and that's again a reminder that you know we serve God and we serve people, and uh, you could probably look around and find uh, someone's drawing of Ezekiel's vision for this new temple, for the priests' chambers, and for all of that stuff. But nothing exactly like the measurements and every, the vision that Ezekiel gives us has yet been built. Doesn't mean it might not still be built at some point in the future. But up until today, you know, we have not gotten a, a new temple, a new city, a, a, and the priest's quarters built according to Ezekiel's vision. And I think that pales a little bit because Ezekiel's vision being so, so precise was one of those things that really brought hope to the people again. Really reminded them of God's love and God's grace and God's commitment to them. And that's, that, that commitment word is a, is a word that we don't maybe use quite so much or we don't put so much stock in it. When we make a commitment to somebody or to something, how committed really are we? Oh, I mean, my plans changed. I couldn't make it. Well, you know, God's commitment to us doesn't change. God's commitment is to love, to be gracious, to forgive, to welcome, and and to give us hope, this promise for our future. And we can always count on that vision. And so this vision of, of Ezekiel's, of the new temple, uh, just shortly after the old temple had been destroyed and their hope was again, you know, destroyed with that temple. I mean, it's just, man, you know, what am I going to do? And, um, it's, I suppose the feeling was kind of like someone that maybe had their house burned down. I've never had that experience. I don't ever want to, but I know people that have lost their homes, different things in, in a fire or, um, you know, a car crash or, you know, someone very important to you dies. I mean, it's just chaos and, and, and disarray in our lives. But with the destruction of the old temple for the Israelite people and the, the loss of hope that they had in that, their vision for the future was gone. And so for them to have Ezekiel come to them with this beautiful vision, very explicit vision of a new temple, of the priest's homes, of of the, uh, we get into chapter three. I mean, chapter 42 deals with the, where the priests would live. Chapter 43 and, and 44 uh, go into a little bit more detail of the temple itself and of the sanctuary and and measurements that way, the dimensions of the altar that, and how to, to consecrate the altar. And, you know, the, the the gates, the east gate, the west gate, the you know uh, the entrances to the temple and to the sanctuary, and um, and then starting in verse ten of chapter forty four, it it deals with the laws governing the priests, and, and there were laws in place already for the priests, but 
But but the but the word of God here is is God says this, and the Levites who went far from me when Israel went astray, who strayed after me from their idols, shall bear their iniquity. Yet they shall be ministers in my sanctuary. So it's a reminder that you know priests, pastors, we're sinners too, and but yet you know the, the priests were still God's messengers of hope, of promise. And, and they would, they would be able to do God's work within the people. But I think one one of the messages that we kind of overlook as we read the Bible is that it's people that are most important to God, and you and me, we are God's people.